Today we're going to be taking a look at the Deepcool FC120 RGB fan. Let's get right into the graphs and the data. This is part of my new testing methodology. So I am comparing it sort of directly against the FK120, which is a sister fan uh, in Deepcool's lineup. So it's going to just be on the other side of the graphs. But the first up is the case simulation test. In the case simulation test, I have it in a box that simulates a PC case that can hold up to a 180 millimeter class fan. And I took it at four key measurement locations. The four key measurements uh, are representative, representative of several different size cases. First, we have the six inch mark. This is representative of an ITX small form factor case that is still an open airflow design, designed for a tower style uh, air cooler inside of it, the one that I just referenced. The Sixers mark is also represented, representative of a short throw distance, meaning the distance, uh, if you have fans at the bottom of your case blowing up into your GPU, that sort of short distance would be that six inch mark, showing that relative effectiveness. The nine inch mark is representative of a compact tower. Uh, think a computer case that can hold a standard ATX motherboard and a GPU of equivalent length, but not much else, so it'd still be a relatively small GPU overall. And then we have the 11 inch mark. This is a standard mid tower case, but basically just think a bog standard mid tower case. And then the 14.5 inch mark is represented by large towers. Think Frap Design Torrent. So these distance lengths, I know they're in inches, and many of you are maybe in other countries and think in millimeters, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in the US, I think in inches. But this distance is not the length of the case. It is the distance from the front fans to the rough position of the CPU socket. So this sort of testing is most important for air coolers. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at noise normalized results. Uh, in this sort of testing, the, my control fan is this teal line, and it's based three parts A12, A5 to one part A14. Uh, two very good fans in the respective categories. In general, 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the 11 and 14.5 inch mark, while smaller 120 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the six and the nine inch mark. And it's based off of my noise normalized value, which is based off the A12 X5 running at around 1,300, 1,400 RPM, which I found particularly silent in my old PC case that when it was AIU cooled inside of it. And the case was the 550D and the cooler was a Corsair, uh, 140 mil, no, 240 millimeter class size. Uh, so all of that said, the FC120 is not a particularly good performer in this category, and the Deepcool FK120 is also um, pretty piss poor uh, in terms of case airflow. How about at 100% PWM fan signaling? Uh, that being said, to reach maximum performance for that air cooler, you can run your fans at 100% PWM fan signal um, to get the max absolute peak maximum wattage, but you shouldn't have to. That's kind of my uh, point I'm making here. So my control. So how do they compare against other fans I have tested? So what do we see? Well, the FK120 is right here at the bottom, right next to the NFS12A, this green line, which actually outperforms it. And I consider the uh, S12A a very poor performing fan overall. So, um, the FK120 is probably not going to get a recommendation here, kind of like the Storm 120 is also not getting a recommendation. Uh, let's see how it looks at 100%. Well, at 100%, it's doing okay. And over here, we got the fan name, the RPM, and the noise level it was generating. So uh, compared to the other fans around it, at its maximum RPM, it's actually not that noisy for its performance. So it just is particularly noisy at noise normalized values, uh, giving it poor performance. But if you can deal with the higher noise level, it does offer up excellent performance. I cannot uh, make that judgment for you as to what noise levels you can handle. So I can only present the data. So if you do have other fans that I've tested or want me to test additional fans so you can see relative results, I can go ahead and do that. Just leave them in the comment sections down below. And as for uh, case or airspeed in the case flow test versus decibel reading. So the nine inch mark was chosen because I needed an airspeed over 0.5 meters per second. It is a limitation of my an current anemometer. If they are under 0.5 meters per second, I don't get accurate readings at all. So the nine inch mark was chosen because it offered the best average higher than 0.5 meters or analysis. So another note, these joggles you see, 
these are harmonics within the fan where I found that it got particularly noisy. And then as I got past that uh, RPM, the PWM fan signal, that the, the fan got significantly quieter before uh, continuing along its path. And uh, harmonics are an indicator for a overall lower quality fan where the uh, company designing it did not spend as much time engineering it to balance itself out as well as they could have. So it's just a little bit unfortunate that the FC120 has some pretty significant harmonics, and we do see harmonics as well in the FK120, actually pr some pretty severe ones. So the FC is slightly better with its harmonics. I only, I only found one, while the FK has two, but it, it's just not. Deep Cool FC120. FK120, pull. So at this time, I'd also like to talk to you about future plans for this channel. So I'm just going to go back to this. Uh, I'm, I'm limited. I want to grow this channel and give you the best fan data out on the internet. None of the other reviewers out there are uh, aerospace engineers who specialize in computational fluid dynamics. In other words, flow through tubes, tunnels, and over wings. And a fan is literally a wing or a propeller, basically right up my alley. But I'm limited in my channel size. Um, if you like what I'm doing, want to see this channel grow, overall testing improvement. Right now my microphone is just what you're hearing me record my voice on right now. I want to get a dedicated microphone for improved noise testing. I want to uh, build a better test chamber for the, my case simulation test. I want to build a little noise isolating chamber. It would not big, like hold enough to hold a PC basically. Um, to do that sort of testing, uh, and a bunch of other just little things, although it's like $2,000, better anemometer, that's actually the most expensive thing. Like, I'm telling you the, how much it is to be real with all of you. Uh, the best way to support me is hitting that subscribe button, joining me on Patreon. Um, I understand if you don't want to do it, uh, and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to keep making the videos the way I'm currently making them. That won't stop and, uh in the foreseeable future. I just want to get down real with you and where I'd like to see this channel grow and become better. I'd love to get to the point where I can acquire pre-builts and do like airflow analysis on them. Um, but uh, let's get back to the really scheduled program. We're doing airspeed through the CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. It is a single tower cooler and in all testing I tested with just one fan attached to it and these are air, flow, air speeds traveling through it. So the, in both these two graphs you see on the screen, uh, upper left is better, bottom right is worse, and we want to beat my control fan. Again, it's got this exact same control fan from the pre previous testing, the A12, A, A12X25 blended with the A14. So we do see that, oh, and the left side, this is RPM versus air speed. It's basically a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design shoving air through that CPU air cooler. And we do see that the FC and FK120s uh, are slightly better than my control fan. So that is a great result. It means that these fans are actually pretty well blade designed for pushing air through a cooler in that pressure scenario. Now on the right side, this is noise versus airspeed. This is how efficient and effective this blade design and motor design is at moving air quietly. And this is where these two fans fall apart. They are just significantly noisier than my control fan. They've got these harmonics and they're just too noisy. Um, so how do they compare overall in, well, the ranking? But overall, the FC and FK are pretty poor performers in noise normalized results. How about at 100% PWM fan signal? Well, over here, we have the fan name, the RPM was running, and the noise level. So right here is the FK. I'm sorry I did not highlight it, but it's at 2 meters per second. Right in line with the Storm ARGB, the Storm, the EK loop. Uh, how does it compare with the A12X25? I'm looking for it. It actually outperforms the A12X25, the FK120, while the FC120 is underperforming compared to the A12X25. So, but... 
How about the noise levels? Well, the two fans are significantly noisier than the Atomic Strive. 5. The Atomic Strive 5 is around 19.6 decibels, while the FC120 is 23.9. So they're noisier, and it's up to you to determine if that noise level is acceptable to you for the appearance of the fans and whether you like them or not. And here is the airspeed versus that decibel reading across several of the fans. And the FC and the FK are right at the this bottom. This is they, the Deep Cool FK120. My opinion, too noisy. In RGB mode. They, I think they look cool, uh, but they're, they're too noisy. It utilizes standard SATA cable, or not SATA, uh, RGB cable. If you don't plug it in, it'll just shoot rainbow colors all the time. So if you like that look, this is perfectly acceptable. But if you want to control the RGB specifically, you got to plug it in. So let's go ahead and do that. Of the fans I've looked at thus far, I would say this is probably more average. Next we have RPM versus CFM. CFM is my least favorite test, mostly because of how other reviewers use it. But just saying generically, this fan is good for in case airflow because high CFM is incorrect. So now that I've ranted for a minute, the FC120 perfectly matches my control fan more or less, which is kind of case in point that the test is stupid. But in noise versus CFM, we do see that the SC120 is once again terrible. So, hey, it's valid in that way. Let's move on. And as it compares to other fans, the FC120 is at the bottom of the pack, and the FK is not much better overall. In PW and Fan Signal, 100%, there they are. You can, you can see how they rank, and uh, they're, they're still pretty close to the bottom, and they're still pretty noisy and it's up to you to determine if that's important to you or not. And in noise versus CFM, here they are once again towards the bottom. Let's just move on to the next section. We are in the value proposition. So the FC120 ARGB is a $20 fan. Value proposition is a very simple calculation. It is performance per dollar. So that is air speed divided by amount of money it costs. So uh, if you're on an ultra tight budget, you want to get the best bang for the buck, but best bang for the buck is not best performance. So if you need performance, you want to compare it to the earlier graphs and determine which fan has the best ratio of performance for money that you can afford. I cannot make these decisions for you, I can only present the information. And on all these graphs, noise normal waste is going to be on the left side, and 100% is going to be on the right side. So the FC120 is below average in noise normal results. At 100%, it's in line with the average, maybe a little bit above average, but it's still not really a great result and 100% in case airflow is not ideal. At the 11 inch mark, well the FK is zero, but the FC is definitely well below average, so definitely not a great case fan. At 100%, a little bit above average, but again that leads us back to the point of, uh, do you really want your case fans running at 100% PW fan signal? For my answer it's no, but um, how about through the CPU or cooler? It's noise normal so it's below average. How about at 100%? Well, at 100%, again, we're ignoring noise level. It's a little bit above average, but it's still a far cry away from the top performers here. So let's move on. See if I'm testing. Below average, noise normalized. In line with average, at 100%. So uh, in summary, what do I think about the sand? Well, it's RGB, it looks kind of cool but its overall performance leaves a lot to be desired, especially considering the price. It's And at the end of every video, I do like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. However, you're allowed to use it for your own personal use. And by that, I mean, if you want to record it down into your own Excel tart charts and make your own graphs, you are more than welcome to do so. But if you're gonna use it in any sort of publication, written journal or video, I do ask that you reference me and my channel. After all, I'm the one who generated it and the data does belong to me. Uh, to generate this level of uh, data, it takes me around one and a half to two hours. Um, and as I implement more tests, uh, hopefully into the future, if I get that, uh, that support that I'm looking for, um, it'll just take longer, uh, which is perfectly fine. I created this channel because I was, or, or I started doing fan testing because I was pretty unhappy with the way a lot of other reviewers were doing fan testing. And I felt that having an actual engineer do it would make a difference. Um, if you got suggestions for fans for me to take a look at, please leave in the comment sections down below. If you've got uh, 
uh, ideas on way I can improve my channel, my videos to make them more enjoyable. I know they're pretty long because I go into a lot of explanation. Uh, please land, leave those in the comment section down below. I always try to improve. Just note that it may take a little bit of time for me to implement it. Uh, but I certainly will uh, try to make those improvements. Um, other than that, check out my Patreon page. Hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching and getting this far in the video. I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.